So Inter 360 has been coming at the action camera market hard and fast lately with their 360 cameras. But I reckon with the release of the Inter 360 X3, this camera might finally be the one that beats the GoPro. And I'm going to be given five reasons, and maybe a little bonus reason at the end, as to why you should buy the Insta360 X3 over the GoPro Hero 11. Now let's start with the obvious, and that's the versatility and freedom a 360 camera can give you over a traditional action camera like the GoPro Hero 11. So when you're filming a traditional action sequence, you kind of want to be in the moment. I always find that when I'm out and about like cycling or segwaying or swimming, that when I'm with the GoPro, I'm always trying to frame up to make sure I'm in shot or the subject's in shot and I've got everything framed up correctly and the auto exposure is working fine. And that really takes away from the experience. Take this shot that I did in PP Island, jumping off a boat into the lagoon. I literally had one shot, one opportunity to do this. And for some reason on the GoPro, I pointed it away from me so I had a first person view. If I'd have pointed the GoPro at me, it'd have been a much better memory and probably a better shot in the future but I chose to face it away from me and now that's the shot I've got. But if I recorded that on Insta360 X3, I could have had both angles. See, where it's recording a 360 degree image, it's recording everything around it. So I could have pointed it anywhere, just jumped in the water and had all the angles I could want afterwards. In fact, and this is a little bonus tip, I could have actually done a split screen view and shown both videos on the screen at the same time using the app to edit the video. This makes the Insta360 X3 a better camera for just staying in the moment when you're capturing these moments. Because you're not worrying about what shot you're getting or framing up or anything like that, because you're capturing everything. So you can do that afterwards. But when you're actually out and about, you really want to stay in the moment. The X3 is the best camera for that. But perhaps you're not into reframing your image in post and you just want to look good straight out of camera and pointing at you straight out of camera. Well, that's okay because Insta360 now has this new me mode. And this, by the way, is the extended edition selfie stick, which isn't required to use me mode. It makes you look really stupid, but definitely has a cool effect. So what me mode is basically doing is taking the bottom part of this camera and the bottom part of this camera and stitching them together right along the lines of the selfie stick, which if you know into 360 means the bottom of the selfie stick is going to be removed and it looks like someone's following you around with the camera. Meanwhile though, with the GoPro Hero 11, you're still going to want a selfie stick because using it like this is a little bit awkward. And obviously that selfie stick is going to be in it and it's going to sort of restrict the kind of shots that you can get. And you can even use like, the single lens mode on the Insta360 X3 as well, which just uses this lens here or this lens here, depending on which one you choose. And that allows it to be used in just like a standard action camera mode. Um, so then you can just mount it to like a normal sort of GoPro mount or whatever. Let's say you've got like a chest mount and you just want to use it like that. You can use just this lens um, and use it like in the way action camera. People who've been following the channel for a while will notice on the X2, I said don't use this feature because it's really bad quality. Um, they've genuinely improved the quality of the single lens mode on the X3, and I think it's really usable at a camera. Fun fact as well, if you're using single lens mode on the X3, then you're getting a wider field of view than you can even get on the GoPro. The X3 coming in at 170 degree field of view, and the GoPro coming in at 140 degree field of view. And obviously with those action stuff, you just want as wide as possible to get everything in frame. Now, I just want to take a moment to stop and praise all the major action camera brands at the moment, because all their dynamic range is so good for a sensors of this small. You're talking the GoPros and DJIs and Insta360s, they're doing great with their post-processing, but sometimes that's just not enough. But sometimes in those really high dynamic range situations, you're gonna need a dedicated HDR mode, so you can capture the detail in those shadows without clipping the highlights too much. And while the GoPro Hero 11 doesn't have its own dedicated HDR mode, the X3 does have a dedicated HDR mode, and you can still use the stabilization from the normal modes. Now the HDR mode on an Insta360 X3 definitely changes the look and feel of the image, but I do think it's quite tasteful and it works really, really well. You can tell in harsh dynamic range situations like this, the Insta360 is actually doing a much better job than the GoPro. You'll also notice you don't have to sacrifice the stabilization on the X3 to go into HDR mode, and you also don't have to sacrifice any resolution, so it's still that full 5.7K footage. Now before we get into more features and more footage, I just wanted to talk about the app for each of these cameras. Now the GoPro Hero 11 has the Quick app and it's functional, it's simple, it backs up everything to the cloud when you connect it up. You can preview what you're looking at on the screen until you hit record button. Um, and it just works kind of as it should, but it's just functional at the end of the day. 
The Insta360 app, however, has a lot more to it. It has some really powerful editing tools in there, which can help you get your final result. So we'll go into this in more detail in my Insta360 ONE RS complete guide, um, which I'll put up here somewhere and in the description down below. Um, but in the app, there's loads of things you can do to the 360 footage. You can reframe, you can track certain people within the frame as well. Um, and you can also do sort of AI replacement tools like sky replacement and clones and things like that. Um, so fun little effects for social media. And all you have to do to make use of these is navigate to the stories tab in the app, choose which story you want. In this case, it's sky swap. Choose a clip. Find the moment in the clip that you want the sky to be swapped in. It will start processing, then you're good to go. There's all kinds of different effects straight off the bat, like this weird otherworldly one. You can even have a UFO in your scene if you want to. And also, if you just wanted some vibrant blue sky with some clouds going across, you can get that too. No joke, you could actually film a sequence on this camera, transfer it over to the Insta360 app and edit it all together without even having to touch a PC. And for this reason, for the consumer market that I think the Insta360 X3 is aimed at, I've always thought the Insta360 app is leagues above others. So when you open up your GoPro and start having to play and going through the modes, you notice you've only got three modes, photo, video, and time-lapse. And that's pretty much it. See, GoPro is always focused on these major selling points and dialing them in to make them perfect. But these cameras are supposed to be fun, right? But the X3 just gives you a ton of different modes and features to play with. Even just scrolling through here, I've got onto star lapse. You can do burst photos, intervals, HDR photos as well. HDR video like we mentioned earlier, time shift modes, bullet time, which you must have seen before as well. Tons of different modes that you can play with and different things you can do to be creative. And that's on top of the 360 and single lens modes we mentioned earlier. Talking of having fun with these cameras, here's the extended edition invisible selfie stick again, this time with the 360 mode on the Insta360 X3. I do think you can have a lot of fun with it if you can hold it all day. My arm is hurting just holding it. It's quite heavy when it's out like this. Um, and maybe on a windy day like today, it can be a good replacement for a drone. Even the time-lapse mode is better on the X3 than it is on the GoPro. The X3 is capable of 8K time-lapses. Now obviously this is the full 360 image and you're going to be zooming in and cropping in. But what that allows you to do then is pan around the time-lapse as well, so you kind of get a moving hyperlapse like feel. Whereas the GoPro can only do 5.2K time-lapses and you obviously can't move them as well. But what's not fun for the consumer is paying more. See what I did there? I'm definitely gonna reel this stick in because my arm is starting to ache. There you go, that's probably more reasonable. So the Insta360 X3 is actually $50 cheaper than the GoPro. So the GoPro comes in at $500 and the X3 comes in at $450. So it's more creative, it's more fun. There's a lot more things you can do and it just makes it much better value for money on the X3 side. When it comes to longevity as well, Insta360 is always listening to people in the forums or creators and people that buy this camera and always issuing updates to fix certain problems like overheating um, and different glitches and things like that. So they're always continuing to update their cameras and that's a really good thing about having an Insta360 camera. GoPro, however, a lot of people have had issues with GoPros and different bugs and things. I've not had massive issues myself, to be honest, but if there are any issues with your camera, the chances are it's gonna be a while before it gets fixed. Most of the stuff that I'm using these cameras for, like going on holiday or action, like cycling or segwaying or anything like that, I kind of want to be in the moment for at these times. The 360 camera genuinely allows me to capture everything that I'm experiencing whilst not having to pay attention to the camera and I can still sort of stay in the moment. And afterwards, when I'm home, I can reframe it, edit it and do all the techie stuff then when I'm not trying to be in the moment. And so while we've already been through and talked about the features and advantages that X3 has over the GoPro Hero 11, the real reason I'll be taking this out more so than the GoPro is for that versatility and staying in the moment. So I'm done waving around the cameras in your face now. If you've got any comments or questions on these cameras, leave them in the comments section down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you found this video informative or helpful at all, hit the thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, obviously subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.